Today, I want to tell you about one of the most important theorems in probability, Bayes' rule. It's a very simple theorem to state and to prove, and yet its applications are profound. It allows us to switch the order in which we're conditioning on things, which can be very helpful in solving problems. As always, We'll begin with the story. The scout waited for one of two monster armies to approach. The first monster army consisted of 60% orcs, 30% ogres, and 10% giants. The second monster army consisted of 90% orcs and 10% ogres. Initially, the scout believed that the army that was approaching was equally likely to be one of the two armies. Then the scout saw an orc emerge from the woods. Now what was the chance that the approaching army was the first monster army? A pretty common mistake when working with conditioning is to assume that the probability of S given R is the same as the probability of R given S. Here is a simple example to see why this fails. Suppose that X, which is a D6, is a roll of a fair six-sided die. Then let S be the event that X is greater than or equal to two, and R be the event that X is at most four. Then the probability of S given information R is the probability that both x is greater than 2 and x is less than or equal to 4 divided by the probability that x is less than or equal to 4. The numerator is 3 sixths, the denominator is 4 sixths, and so the answer is 3 fourths or 75%. On the other hand, the probability of r given information s is the same numerator the probability that x is greater than or equal to 2 and x is less than or equal to 4, but a different denominator. The denominator this time is the probability of s, the probability that x is greater than or equal to 2. And so we end up with 3 6 divided by 5 6, or 3 fifths, or 60%. So the numerator is going to be the same for the probability of s given r and the probability of r given s, but the denominator will be different for the two problems. To convert from one to the other, it is necessary to multiply and divide by the appropriate denominators. This technique is known as Bayes' rule. If S and R are events with positive probability, then the probability of S given R equals the probability of R given S times the probability of S divided by the probability of R. Now, Bayes' rule is named after its inventor, Thomas Bayes, an 18th century statistician and Presbyterian minister who wanted to understand how obtaining evidence affected probabilities of events. For such an important theorem, the proof is very easy. Let S and R be two events of non-zero probability, then the probability of S and R is the probability of S given R times the probability of R, or we could think of it as the probability of S times the probability of R given S, and dividing through by the probability of R then finishes the proof. So now that we have Bayes' rule, let's try and solve our story. Let S denote the event that the approaching army is the first monster army and R the event that the first monster seen in the army is an orc. Then our goal is to find the probability of S given R. At the start, there are three pieces of information. We know that the probability of S is one half, the probability of R given S is 0.6, and the probability of R given not S, that is given that it's the second monster army, is 0.9. Therefore, it is much more likely to have seen an orc if it was not the first monster army that approached. So it would seem that having this piece of information R should decrease the probability of S and increase the probability of not S. To make this idea precise, Bayes' rule can be used to find the probability of S given R from the probability of R given S. But if we're going to use Bayes' rule, we're going to need to know both the probability of S and the probability of R. We're given the probability of S is one half, but what is the probability of R? Well, to get this, what we're gonna do is we're first gonna divide the event R into the disjoint set of events where both R and S occur and the situation where R occurs, but S does not. So recall that if R occurs, either both R and S occur or R occurs and S does not, and those two events are disjoint, so the probability of their logical or is just the sum of the probabilities. Now we can use the conditional probability formula to break up this probability of RS 
and this probability of R not S. So probability of R is going to be the probability that S occurs times the probability of R given S, plus the probability that S does not occur times the probability that R occurs given that S did not occur. Now we put in all our numbers and we end up with 0.75 for the overall probability that R occurs. Remember, R is the event that the scout saw an orc. Finally, Bayes' rule can be used. The probability of S given R is the probability of R given S times the probability of S over the probability of R. So 0.6 times one half over three quarters, which is 0.4 or 40%. So by seeing an orc, our initial probability of 0.5 for it being the first monster army has dropped down to 40% for the first monster army. Now, in general, when you're trying to tackle Bayes' rule types of problems or probability problems in general, the following steps can be really helpful. First, give names to all the events given in the problem. Second, write down for these events all the probabilities given by the problem. Third, write down the goal of the problem. And fourth, use the probability formulas and Bayes' rule to move from the information given to the final goal. Now, remember that when you're calculating the probability of S given R, the event R occurring can be viewed as evidence in favor or disfavor of S. Prior to learning that R occurred, the probability of S is just probability of S. So this is called the prior probability because it's prior to us seeing whether or not R is true or not. After learning that R occurred, the probability is the probability of S given R. So this is called the posterior probability of S. So when we're using Bayes' rule, one of the things that we often need, like in the story that we covered today, is the probability of R. And a useful way of thinking about it is called the law of total probability. The law of total probability says that if we have a sequence, S sub 1, S sub 2, et cetera, of disjoint events such that the probability that at least one of the events is true is 1, then the probability of R and notice that R is any event. It has nothing whatsoever to do with the sequence. We can get it by taking the infinite sum of the probability that SI occurs times the probability that R occurs given SI occurs. Now, before we prove this, it really helps to have the following result. For any event A, if the probability of B equals one, then the probability that A occurs is equal to the probability that both A and B occur. Now, if the probability of B equals one, that means the probability that B does not occur is one minus one or zero. And of course, B and not B partition the truth. So R is equal to R and B or not B, which distribution gives is R and B or R and not B. So the probability of R is at most the sum of those two things, which is the probability of RB, given that not B has probability zero. Also, RB, of course, implies R, which tells us that the probability of R is at least the probability of RB. So we've got the probability of R is at most the probability of RB. Probability of R is at least the probability of RB. So they have to be equal. Now we can show that the law of total probability. By the last result, the probability of R is going to be both the probability of, that R occurs and at least one of the S sub I is true. We can distribute that R to give the probability that at least one of the R S I is true. All of those are going to be disjoint. So we can break that up by countable additivity into the infinite sum of the probability of R S I. And then probability of R S I is just the probability that S I occurs times the probability that R occurs given that SI occurs. Now, the law of total probability as we wrote it was for an infinite sequence of events. But remember, we can, if we only have a finite number of events, we can just extend that out to the sequence by making the rest of the events false. And that means that the law of total probability also applies to any finite set of events as well. And we use that in the story when we basically partition the truth into either S occurs or S does not occur. That's it for today.
See you next time.